Good afternoon, beautiful ladies. I don't see you, but you see me and you hear me. So welcome. Thank you so much for dedicating me a little bit of your time this afternoon. And for it's a special occasion for me because I, uh, this is the first time that I decided to make it publicly. So uh, really launching a series of new paintings here in, in, a, in this private and safe space. Uh, the idea was to stream uh, in the group, but we had some problems with the, the permissions. Mm, but it's not uh, so dramatic because we will record the, the event and then we will be able to upload on YouTube or maybe, and uh, yes, it's more efficient. So everyone can have a replay anytime. So um, today um, <laughs> I'm going to speak a little bit about my collection. But at first, uh, if you want, I would love you to introduce uh, yourself, you know, just a few words to say hi. And uh, yes, we, uh, the event could, could be more personal, more, you know, interactive, I think. And then uh, we, we can start. It's up to you. I, I don't force you to switch on your cameras or your <laughs> I'll say hi then, shall I? <laughs> In case anybody doesn't know me, I'm Stephanie and um, I am um, a fibre sculptor and I've known Elisa for um, probably three years now, do I? Is it three years? Mm. Yes, and um, I love Elisa's art and I have one of her delightful paintings in my home, which I'm looking forward to putting up in my new home. So, uh, yeah, yeah, so I'm really looking forward to seeing your new pieces. Thank you. Thank you, Steph, for your trust and your friendship. You're always so welcome. And um, so um, I, and the first thing I would love to do with all of you is uh, taking inspiration as a group, as a small group today, with some, some cards. So this morning I received a sort of, you know, it's not an oracle, that because I don't I don't do oracles at all, but it's quite um, an empowerment deck, and so there are some some beautiful affirmations for empath empaths. So I, I am an empath. So don't worry, Trisha. That's all okay. I appreciate it anyway. Enjoy, enjoy. And so I, I will I will pull a card and let's see what what the, what it says. Oh, wow. <laughs> so the card is this one and it says, center yourself. Take a few deep breaths to regain your center. And now you can approach life from a more mindful place. This is quite uh, a very appropriate uh, thing to start with because... Um, uh, this collection was born after um, uh, a month or maybe a couple of months of terrible confusion that I had in my mind. And I really was not able to, to figure out how to overcome this artistic block, if I can, if I can call it this way. And, uh, you know, I always tended to be very per perfectionist and, you know, chasing something which was in my head, but I didn't know what it was, uh, thinking about painting. And so looking here, looking there, reading here, reading there, I, I decided that the, the only thing I could do to, to move forward and so overcome this sort of block that I had was to completely neglect what I was doing. So changing direction. And so I, I decided not to, to draw faces and not to paint faces for a little while. And I started to do something completely different. So just playing with my paints and experimenting with my tools. And uh, it happened at the beginning of September. 
when I recorded a small video that for, for an event that I had with Stephanie and other girls of our collective where, yes, I presented and showed some of my most famous pieces of figurative art, but I wanted to show people that I was doing something different. And <laughs> I can't find the proper name, but mess. Yes, I was, I was making mess. That's, that's the message. And I was not dying. So I realized that perfectionism was not synonymous of life and was a good starting point. But in, you know, exploring new tools meant a lot. And maybe before showing you the paintings, I don't want to steal a lot of time from you. Uh, it's worth showing you some of the tools. Some are very strange, really. This is for, I, I didn't know it, it exists, uh, a, a paintbrush made of foam, for example. I didn't know about this. And, but I studied and found it. And so I, and there are also some brushes made of silicone gum. They are very flexible and they produce different marks from, um, from traditional brushes with bristles. They are very, very, very different. So um, I experimented with charcoal, with palette knives and sponges. Anything was able to create a mark on a piece of paper and without any particular aim and goal, but experimenting. And that was a good starting point because um, all the paintings that I'm, I'll be showing you in a moment start from an abstract background. So the, the, the underpainting of all the pieces is not, you know, the usual grid and, the, you know, the, the line of a face of an eye, but everything started from an abstract background. So just color and, uh, and marks on a canvas. And I remember that one afternoon, my, uh, one of my kids went upstairs in my studio and saw me <laughs> with my hands dirty of, of paint. I was using red, red, yellow, and orange paint and say, mommy, are you having fun? And I said, yes, I am. Can I try? And so we stayed there for one hour doing like this. And we, yes, we filled three or four canvases. Yes, the ones that actually are you know, covered with my actual painting. So everything started by chance. I, I wasn't planning anything. But it was a way to start because when, when people uh, express their fear of making art and being creative, that's the same fear that a writer can, can experience in front of a, a blank page. So the first word and the first mark is the most scary, the scariest one. Um, maybe it's better not to, uh, not to think about this, but just centering ourselves as the card suggests. So taking a deep breath and just, just do it. Um, oh, someone is commenting in my post and... Um, let me see if there's someone wants to join and found difficulties. I will be continuing in a second. Okay. The email does not have the Zoom link. It is an event right, right page, but not Zoom link there. Okay. Wow. I don't know why. I'll be sending you the link in a message. How can it be possible, Steph? Last time it was not like this. So are people not receiving the message? Yeah, they have the um, they have the the mail, but they didn't get the. Um, 
So when you set it up in Eventbrite, did you actually put details of the link in there for the email to send out? Yeah, I set uh, an online event and uh, mm. just to prepare the, the yeah, set. It could be, just be no, event, if, right? If it was a problem because we, we postponed for a week, I really don't know. Anyway, so I started from an abstract background and I just built the figure. So you will find the five paintings and um, they are painted with a, so a limited number of colors. And I use it black, white and two different kind of red, uh, a warm red and a cool red. This is the warm red, which is mm -hmm. called cadmium red. It's a brilliant one. And this is a medium value. And uh, this is uh, the warm one because it includes um, a yellow bias, as they, 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 the theories uh, of colors used to say. And this is the cool, um, the cool uh, red, which is called alizarin crimson. And it includes a little bit of blue that make, makes it turn uh, cool, cooler than, than this one. So the, the pink shades that you will see on the, on the paintings uh, are simply uh, these two reds mixed with, with white and a little bit of black to do them, to dull them down, okay? Uh, it's good to have so, so bright shades, but it, it's good to experiment. And when you have so uh, um, these uh, narrow uh, uh, number of colors, you are forced to exper experiment a lot because you, you have to uh, create the, the darks, the medium and the lights as much as you can. So you, you have to, to think how to be original without having many colors. And it was a challenge in itself. Um, <clears throat> okay. Um, I hope that Agnieszka will be able to join. I sent her the link. I don't know, fingers crossed. But uh, I want to show you the, I don't know if you can see it or not, but this is the, uh, Oh, Jessica, <laughs> let's switch on the camera. So this is the overall image of all the paintings. They are, there are four on canvas and one on, uh, on paper. And the, the sides is more or less, uh, in, every, in any case, uh, 40 by 50. So 40 centimeters by 50 centimeters. And uh, I think that the best thing to do is to introduce the paint, each painting. Uh, and uh, is the view any better? Um, I will show you the painting one by one. And so I can speak a little bit about everything. This is the first piece. And uh, oh, 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 okay, I will try to center myself. This is called uh, Burning Soul. And actually it gives the, the title to the whole collection. And this is the, the first painting that I did for this uh, collection. And uh, uh, I think that expresses a lot of emotion and drama. Okay, yeah, now it's better. Of course, uh, it was too far away. And uh, yes, I mm, took a, mm, a good reference. I think a lot of emotion here. And I think that the, the uh, most important message from this one is that um, passion and desire can have many, you know, many shades. This is the most passionate one, of course, uh, the most dramatic and uh, um, as women, we always tend to make other people happier than us. We, we work for others and we tend to, for, to forget that we all have desires and expectations. And I think that the powerful message of the collection that can be summarized by this canvas is that um, you 
can desire. You can have dreams. You can be strong. You are strong enough to achieve your dreams, which is the most, I think, uh, powerful idea of this. And uh, yeah, the red pops a lot, pops, uh, pops a lot. Uh, I don't know if the nude will be a problem for Facebook, maybe yes. <laughs> I don't know if it will allow me to, to publish the, the painting in, uh, in all, the, all the shapes, but I will try. Anyway, it will block me eventually, I really don't know. So this is the first one. And there is a lot of mark making, as I was telling before, so many dots it's, uh, and a lot of, that, of texture. And I can try to show you something of this. Of course, the, I took some pictures in the morning and I will show you in Facebook as well when, as I publish each painting. And um, yeah, a lot of texture and a lot of charcoal work. I used a charcoal, a charcoal pencil to outline the, uh, the physical feature of the lady. Mm, but the most <laughs> commented one so far is the only one that I shot entirely, and it was this one. The name of this painting is Magdalene. Uh, don't hold me back. And this is, mm, so in a few words, uh, a portrait of uh, Mary Magdalene, Saint Mary Magdalene. And at the beginning, I really didn't know who she was. So I, I wrote a post a few days ago about the story of this piece. I just found a wonderful vintage picture on Pinterest. I love vintage pictures because the women were really authentic, even without makeup. And so I took inspiration from this lady who was, you know, a little bit of sad and melancholic and nostalgic. So something that uh, calls the saudade from Portugal, I think. And that's what attracted me the most. And so I just started, you know, sketching hair and painting hair. Uh, and then I, I'd almost finished there when I heard, you know, the instinct inside my head that telling me, wow, I had a little bit of red here on, the, on her hand. And so I did. And, you know, taking the distance from the painting, um, I realized that I was, you know, um, painting a stigmate on her hand. And then I realized that uh, maybe she was, she was a saint or someone involved with, you know, mystical Christian uh, religion. And Mary Magdalene came to my, to my mind, not because of her, <clears throat> you know, there are many legends about Mary Magdalene, we could talk for hours and hours, but in my vision, uh, or at least what is my vision, um, the passion of Mary Magdalene was not a physical one for Jesus, but uh, the, the suffering uh, or in, in the stigma, but also in her, in her eyes. Um, we're talking about uh, a subtle desire, a burning desire, not for physical attraction, but for uh, the light that he used to communicate to others for the message that he brought. So it was a spiritual love, more or less. And I think that this, this painting is the, is the, um, really gives uh, the same message, but in an opposite way. So no drama here, but it's just a suggestion of drama because the pose is very static. And also the, the, the eyes are quite, you know, uh, uh, watching far from where she is because she really knows that he doesn't belong to this world. He belongs to the other world. Thank you, Trisha. Thank you. I'm happy that you love it. And also here, a lot of abstraction because her, her hair are, you know, spots of color. I, oh, Agnieszka, wonderful. 
Wonderful, Agnieszka. Oh. Yes, we are here. <laughs> Welcome. And so a lot of abstraction, as I was saying, hello, because her hair are um, blobs of color. I didn't use um, a palette knife. Uh, I didn't use the paintbrush, but I used the palette knife. So let me show one if I find it. Okay. This is a palette knife. It's quite a knife. And you can use it to scrub, to, um, to make the color like this and create a lot of texture. Okay. And this is quite raw. I didn't give a lot of definition to the physical appearance of Magdalene. The most, the areas which are most defined and refined are in the face and the eyes. But you won't find the same, the same, uh, you know, precision in the other areas of um, of the painting, and it is an effect that I wanted because the, mm, you know, the the glance, the the eyes were the focal point. So uh, immediately the the viewer can connect with her emotionally by her eyes. And uh, about her story, um, I had the opportunity to visit in France uh, a sort of cave where uh, she, the tradition, the French tradition says that she lived after that she left the, um, you know, the Jerusalem, no? She went away with some of the first uh, people, from some of the people who met Jesus when he was alive and uh, by boat she arrived in, uh, in Provence and she lived there for maybe 30 years and the legend says that every day she was brought up in the sky from angels and then she was pulled down again every, uh, every time, they, every day for 30 years and uh, the uh, the day that uh, the angels told her that she would die, she went downhill because the, the cave is in the mountains. You, you have to walk a lot, maybe two or three hours by feet because it's very, it's, it's like climb, climbing. And she went down and she was able to meet again one of uh, the other people who went there with her from Jerusalem, Maximino, Maximin, and then she died. So you can find a lot of news about this, a lot of information, uh, because her skull is still there in the place where the, the church is and she, where she was buried. So. Apart from the story, I was really interested in exploring the feeling and the, 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 the desire and the way she burned for her love for Jesus. So a, a, an intellectual love, a spiritual love instead of a physical one. Please interrupt me and ask me anything you want. <laughs> yeah, Lisa, sorry, because I was late. What's the name? What's her name? That, that painting you just Magdalene. 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 Right, right. The subtitle mm -hmm. is uh, Don't Hold Me Back because uh, uh, when sh she was the first one who met Jesus on the, um, on the Easter day after the resurrection. And she, at the beginning, she say, she, she thought that he was a gardener who was working near the, st the grave. Mm. And then she realized that uh, he was Jesus and she tried maybe to, you know, to block him and say, come with me. I want other people to, to see you uh, as well. And she said, don't, don't hold me back. So I have to do my stuff. <laughs> okay. mm -hmm. It in sounds something like noli me tangere. And it is quite, it's a very popular sentence and it's very, it's very famous. And there are many paintings in, uh, in history of art that paint that moment. So when Jesus say, noli me tangere, and pulling her back, ah. okay, 
Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's really, I love to know the, the context. It's, I think, yeah, it adds so much to the painting. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, we, can, we, we could speak for hours. I yeah. <laughs> about this, of course. And then let's see what I have behind here. Okay, oh, this is the third one. I, I made a list. <laughs> with, with the with the right order I want to show you. So oh, this is another painting that I showed partially in Facebook because this is this one this part of the dress of the little dancer was indeed the, the graphics of the event. And <clears throat> I call this piece the glimmer. And in this case I wanted to have you know um, a burning soul in a, you know in a limited shape even because the age is not you know a, <clears throat> a factor to to say that uh, the passion is less important no kids are able to to love and uh, to have so strong passions and when i saw the reference of this young girl who was just opening it, opening the door, um, not figuring out what was behind the door that she was opening. Then I said, "Okay, it's it's a good starting point for another kind of burning soul." So the uh, soul exploring the the growth, okay, opening um, herself to life, and this is called the glimmer because even if it's not very clear, there is uh, the source of light is behind um, is behind there coming from a window which is uh, uh, abstracted here because uh, the texture is uh, very strong, and you see the, the dark line which is the door opening. So uh, if you if you could see the painting from from real life, uh, it would be clearer. And also here I used a lot of palette knife, uh, and totally, the pa uh, totally, almost totally palette knife, even for the face. The face is very, very raw. The facial features are not very sophisticated, not very precise, and they are quite unprecise, but it's okay. The overall feeling was to suggest that there is something inside her who is uh, waiting to come out and explode. What is the significance of the red skirt? Because it stands <laughs> out, right? The red. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think that I use the red to because it was a meaning in it, but if, just because I was driven to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah I actually yeah. love that because it's just that color there. Yeah. yeah. But if you want to read the, you know, an analogy or an allegory, uh, the, the dress is the only, I don't know, artificial stuff that makes her be a woman, but inside she is just a girl exploring herself, maybe. Mm. Mm, yeah. This area of the painting really pops up because it's it's the warm, the warmest uh, color, and it's normal that it pops up because yeah. warm color tend to come uh, towards us instead of cooler yeah. colors that recede. So this is correct. Correct. Anna, let's allow her in. <laughs> I had to postpone it at <laughs> six o'clock. <laughs> okay. And so the fourth piece is this one. And Agnieszka was able to live with me <laughs> the final stage of this. I love I this just, one. Just tender. Agnieszka, what did the, see what I did? I can't believe that I was able to do like something like this. I love it. <laughs> I love this one. And it just, it's just, you can't forget this painting once you've seen it. <laughs> 
<laughs> you make me blush. <laughs> the name for this, I decided it uh, not long ago, is uh, Daphne in Japan. That it seems to be meaningless, but I will explain shortly. Uh, when I saw the pose of the lady, of the lady that inspired this, uh, hello Anna, hello. So when I saw the pose of the lady that inspired this uh, this painting, uh, she reminded me a, a sculpture by uh, Gian Lorenzo Bernini, and she, this sculpture is very famous, and it's called uh, Apollo and Daphne. And this is a uh, you know a Baroque sculpture, and uh, very very famous for the the dynamics of the structure, and uh, the story behind this is that uh, the the god of the sun Apollo uh, had fallen in love with uh, with Daphne, who was uh, you know something like a fairy, uh, a fairy li like the Tinkerbell of the ancient woods. <laughs> so she, she lived in the woods and uh, she was free and she was, you know, independent and she didn't want to be chased by Apollo, not at all. And when he was trying to rape her, and it's very common in Greek mythology, <laughs> so I do apologize for the violence. Uh, when he tried to rape her, uh, she um, asked and obtained to be uh, turned into a, a, a tree. So you say, when you see the, or, the original sculpture, you will see uh, Daphne that is turning into a tree. So her hands are uh, filled with um, leaves, and uh, the, the legs are becoming the trunk. And so it, it reminded me something like this, but uh, the idea of the Japan <laughs> was suggested by these, uh, you know, sort of sakura, sakura flowers uh, blossoming in Japan each, each spring. And uh, it was quite, you know, uh, a, a lucky accident because uh, I decided to add, you know, this uh, a sort of stencil, sh uh, stencil shape, stencil decoration on this uh, blank and wh white uh, background. And then the story happened. So this is a very lucky accident. I'm very happy <laughs> because uh, I, I hadn't prepared or ha hadn't told anything just before. It just happened. And... Um, it's quite uh, rich. It's, it's quite rich in texture as well, and uh, she is looking up. And the the light coming from this side, so illuminating her profile, and then the, the chest, and then here we have the the darkest side of the painting. Uh, she is very raw, especially in her hands. I could have done a better line work and more refining, but I didn't want to do to add anything. It was perfect like she was, so I didn't really want to add anything else because the happy accident <laughs> had to be celebrated, and that's it. So Daphne in Japan. And the last one is a portrait, not a figure, and uh, this, that's this one. And this is the uh, girl in a in crim crimson color. So she's, you know, it, maybe she reminds like a Syracuse girl, no? Says so something like this. The inspiration came from another vintage picture and uh, yeah this was very very abstract so uh, uh, if you could see the underpainting it was totally abstract and then I decided to give some unity and unify all the things by covering part of it because it, otherwise it could be too distracting for for people when you when you watch uh, when you look at her and uh, <clears throat> In this case, I used a lot of gray. So the, the neutral gray 
can be very useful to make some elements pop up without using the, the white. Ray is a, is a great resource if you don't have many colors to work with. And uh, 50 shades of gray, <laughs> so quoting the book can be useful as well. So this is the, the last piece. I won't make prints. So the, the, piece, uh, the pieces are being sold as originals because I really don't believe that uh, a single a, a print can, uh, can have the, you know, the tangible emotion of a canvas. And uh, maybe Stephanie and Jessica, thank you, Anna, for joining. Thank you. <laughs> I'm... <laughs> Uh, and Jessica and Stephanie can confirm that uh, original art has um, a different flavor, you know, a different emotional connection for, for the viewer. And I, I really understand that uh, sometimes uh, uh, it's very cheap and uh, good to have posters because I, I was the first in, in, in the world to buy posters and I have many. But uh, <clears throat> uh, I can't expect that a poster of the Kiss by Klimt is like the Kiss by Klimt. So it's just, uh, you know, a matter of priorities, I think, sometimes. And uh, so the, just speaking about the cost, but I really don't want to, to stop with this because it's, uh, it's a secondary problem. <laughs> it's a secondary aspect. Uh, will be 540 euros. And, but for you, it's just 500 years and shipping uh, to be, of course, um, counted uh, separately. Um, <clears throat> of course, it's not the, the, the aim of the meeting is not selling, but just talking about the process and, um, and the stories. So uh, if you will ever feel called to, to have some more information, of course, you are welcome. Um, any questions? <laughs> Otherwise, I, we can go ahead <laughs> because the the best part is coming. <laughs> yeah. So, did you paint um, all the the whole of the um, collection with your new tools, or did you use any of your other brushes that you use for your other pieces? I used everything. Okay. Uh, so, uh, starting from uh, let me see. A charcoal pencil to to sketch the shape. Uh, the, uh, for the dancer, for example, I started from I took uh, you know a small brush and sketched the the, the shape like this. Da, 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 da. So very very fast. And uh, uh, yeah, no, I used uh, uh, everything, also the briar. So I have some small briars made with foam that were useful to, to work with the stencils. So everything that I had on hand um, was okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, in, the, in the pictures that I will be publishing in the next few days, you will see that the texture is very relevant. <laughs> of course, uh, showing like this, you lose a lot. Yes. And nothing compares to the actual seeing it in, in the flesh, as it were. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Beautiful. Love it, Elisa. Thank you, Trisha. Thank you, Trisha. Now it's the moment that I give you something in return for your, <laughs> for your patience and for your affection and for your love. And uh, so... Um, I don't know if you are able to to follow the process that I'm, you know, uh, uh, building for you. But I would love you to in, to be involved in a speed speed that session with me. Are you okay with this? Yeah, yes. that's <laughs> fun. Stephanie knows about it, but. Don't be afraid because it's very, very simple, but we'll, we'll get, we're having fun. So I'm here. At first, I want to make some space so I will leave my brushes and everything. What you need to work with me right now, just take a piece of paper, 
Number one. Then, a black pen or a black marker, but something that is permanent. And third ingredient for the receipt is a red marker or red oil pastel, red pencil, whatever it is, red. So we will use the same tools that I used for the collection. <laughs> I am crazy, completely mad. <laughs> Jessica, don't worry, I am normal. I'm, I'm quite worried. Yeah. I, I think it's quite difficult. <laughs> Hi, Erica. Erica is joining. If you have to stand up and look for the stuff, please go. Hello, Erica. We just have uh, had a nice talk about the paintings. I showed in details of the paintings, but you will be able to catch the replay, so don't worry. And now we are starting to make some speed art sessions. So we will have, you know, 10, 15 minutes together making art uh, together. So drawing and reflecting a little bit about the, the message of the collection that I would love to share with you, even in this form, okay? So we are using uh, a simple uh, sheet of paper. I took uh, a small one, but if you have larger, you're welcome to use because you are more free to make marks and whatever. I will take a pen, black pen. So just let me stand up for a moment. And now we will provide a pen for me. Okay. And then I bring, I have with me a red oil pastel. I will use this one. Are you ready? Okay. The last ingredient is, uh, if you have it, a small mirror. You know, the one that you have in your bag. Or as an alternative, when I say, when we, uh, we need the mirror, you can go to the bathroom and <laughs> use the mirror of the bathroom, okay? <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> but if you, you can work without the mirror, so it's not compulsory. But if you have it, it's okay. Otherwise, you can see yourself reflected in the screen. So it's not a, it's not a problem. We, we, we can see uh, all of us uh, in, the, in the screen. So basically, we have a mirror in front of us, no? Okay. So as I said, the, um, the, the most powerful message of the collection was to... Um, to give a particular attention to, uh, to the desire and to what makes our art burn. Uh, desire, fear, love, uh, you know, passion, whatever it is. But I think that when it comes to talk about love, which is one of my favorite topics, um, we should start from loving ourselves. And Jessica knows that I am very, very passionate about self-loving, and we always talk about this topic when we when we when, when we phone each other. And so I think that the best burning soul is our burning soul, but we should burn of passion and love for ourselves. So we start this uh, art session by writing a few lines of like a love letter for ourselves. You don't have to write, you know, the Shakespearean comedy, not at all, because in five minutes, it's not possible, but showing some words of love for ourselves, is, it can be possible, no? We can express, and, you know, the congratulations and 
the desire that we want to achieve, thinking as it has already happened. For example, Elisa, I wish you the peace that you are looking for. I wish you all the love that you want to be surrounded by. Something like this, okay? Talking to ourselves uh, using the third person. Just a few lines, okay? Thinking as we already got it. So we are now manifesting what we want. And trusting that we already got it. So five minutes from now, let's we can concentrate and shut down and be silent for us. And even five minutes can be precious.
Okay, let me know when you're done. Also feel free to read out loud what you wrote to yourself if you want to share. I can share. Oh, very good. This yes. was fun. This was fun, Alisa. <laughs> at, the first I wasn't, at first I wasn't going to do it. And then I'm like, oh, what are you talking about? So thank you. No, um, no. Yes, it's, it's some, somehow crazy, but it makes sense at the beginning, in the end. You will find that it makes sense. Just trust me. Trust me. Okay. Let me read here. Congratulations. Oh. You want me to read it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, Trisha, for creating the life you've dreamed of. You share love and magic everywhere you go. The lives you touch are made better and better. The ripple effect of spreading your love and compassion are infinite. The overflowing financial abundance you attract allows a never-ending stream of resources to help more people and aid in creating a world where love overcomes fear to magic, miracles, fun, and joy. It's amazing. I love it. <laughs> Thank so you. So mystic, so full of light and burning soul. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you. Who's next? That was nice. I loved it. <laughs> I can share mine as well. I can see how this can actually help further down the line. So I wrote, not very modestly, I wrote, you're the most precious, most genius and creative soul, which has a divine power to activate other people's souls, desires and bringing them over. Your expression is so activated and speaks directly to the souls of other people. Your imagery, whether in words or visuals, or your voice speaks to the souls and activates them. So I I know I, I know what I mean. I don't know if I, I, I think that, I, yeah. we all know what you mean because you are a wonderful communicator. And yes, please, everyone who's here tomorrow join our creative talk with Anieska because she will. She will uh, show how powerful she is in what she does uh, about, you know, relationship with, uh, between human beings and all, all what is connected with relationships. So, yes, you are an activator. Uh, uh, otherwise, you wouldn't, you couldn't do what you do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And thank you. We'll have fun tomorrow. But, yeah, I'm looking forward to the process now. Yeah. Okay. Steph. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. I've written, Stephanie, I wish for you creative peace and a haven to prosper more, more, more. Your heart will always be happy and infectious. It is a gift to you and from you. Rejoice with love in your heart and tomorrow there will be more, bigger, brighter. Wonderful. It's bossy, 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 bossy and bold. I love it. <laughs> Jessica, would you like to share? I'm, I'm quite ashamed about this. I have to say the truth. <laughs> but I try, I can try. Yes, um, no one is judging anyone. The most I, judgmental, it's you. It's you for you. Yes, yes, yes you're yeah, right. Um, what uh, I wish to myself in this period yeah. of my life is not mm, uh, not to lose uh, my faith in people and the ability to look uh, at uh, at good that is around me. Uh, that is the best that I I'd like to have in this uh, in this moment of my life. You know. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. So it's up to me now. <clears throat> Elisa, I wish you the presence of God near you 
I wish you happiness, smile, harmony. I wish you a lot of time to experience freedom. I wish you that you can heal from your wounds that others made and that you don't want to keep. Elisa, I wish you love. Okay, a lot of value. Now we, have, we are ready for the second step. So don't be afraid. Okay, <laughs> I promise this. Now we are using the red tool hmm, to overlap to our small card a symbolic portrait of ourselves. It means that we are not going to draw the Gioconda, okay? No. We are not drawing the Mona Lisa, uh, the David by Michelangelo, no. We are just using this one to make a, some line work, okay? Some line work. And uh, I, I suggest you to use the mirror because you can look at yourself and simultaneously just, you know, drawing your features not because you have they have to be precise but just to get inspiration i will just look at myself in the screen so nothing precise you can even use your non dominant hand so if you are uh, if you write with your right hand try to do this with the left hand because you have no control we have to lose control Okay, let it go, let it go. It will be a monster, I don't know. It will be something that overlaps to this. It will be a sign, a mark from you. So it's all okay. At least mine will be a monster with my right hand. <laughs> <laughs> Double monster with the left one. <laughs> Yes, you can, you can even, okay, using your dominant hand, for example, you can challenge yourself not to um, uh, detach the pen from your uh, sheet of paper. So you can just draw by a unique hand and the crossing and crossing over the same line. All is okay. Okay? If, let's say we have experiment. So on the same paper, you can add some line work on this. Let's have a try. Just five minutes, so really, really speed. I really want to look down at the, at, at the, at the paper and just looking at myself and following my features on the screen. You can add details, whatever you want. It's not precise, it's not okay. It is okay the same, doesn't have to be perfect.
When you've done, you can stop. I will show you mine so you can understand that <laughs> it's a it's a mess. <laughs> I use this um, you know soluble pastel and I decided to spray some water, but wasn't good uh, a good result. But that's okay. It's just you know the meaning of this. Anyone who wants to show. Is welcome. I can share. It's the first thing I've drawn in ages. Oh my God. Maybe not what I wanted, but you know, I just had so much fun doing it. Yeah, <laughs> just nice and with the left hand, just rough lines, you know. It's okay. Line work, yeah. It's, you achieved some likeness. I really. I really appreciate that you made your attempt. Thank you, Steph, as well. <laughs> Jessica? Yes, perfect. That's what I wanted you to do. Perfect, perfect. I'm happy that you had fun because it means that it's possible to be creative even without a bachelor in arts. Mm? And it's possible to couple creativity with some mindfulness. That's what, what we, that's what we wanted to do right now. And so I, I hope that you will keep this uh, small postcard as uh, you know, a memory of the time that we spent together today. Thank you and so much. And, uh, and as a reminder of the self-love that you should try boot to yourself every day. Wonderful. <laughs> really, we are closing. So I have nothing more to say except that I don't know, I don't know what to cook for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, use your creativity to cook your dinner. <laughs> I will do my best. <laughs> that was so much fun. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for everyone for joining. And um, uh, others will catch the replay on YouTube as we upload the, the replay. And I will provide the link to, the link, uh, to everyone so you can you know, go through the process and watch again whatever you want. And uh, I do apologize for the grammar speaking, uh, my grammar speaking of English, that sometimes is quite... It's like perfect, it. we get you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, thank you so much. Our next events together are tomorrow in the group with Agnieszka and then uh, in a week time for uh, another uh, session of creativity uh, together. Uh, because we have the monthly cycle and the November topic is surviving. So a <laughs> lot of think about. Yeah. Thank you so much. Have a lovely evening, everyone. And that's yours. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>